Good morning, everybody. Uh, we have uh, not much time, I think, by the time it ends by 12. OK, so uh, if, you, uh, if you, um, you may be aware, uh, this was not actually the planned schedule. I think uh, the plan was a panel discussion. It was supposed to happen. Uh, and uh, most of the panel members kind of bailed me out. So I'm uh, left with uh, this uh, talk on uh, uh, cloudifying uh, central office. Uh, can we do it with ODL? So, so I am uh, Sridhar, and I represent uh, Spirant uh, Communication. So, so Spirant is a testing, test and measurement equ uh, equipment company. So, so we are done quite a bit with uh, NFP, NSPN. So l l let, let me begin with uh, uh, this topic. So, uh, the term, there is no proper definition of cloudifying. So what do you mean by cloudifying? Uh, there are different terms. Uh, so I think uh, when, when somebody defined NFE, they said uh, cloudifying of network functions. Uh, they gave this as a definition for network fu NFE. M taking the network function, whatever is in the physical box, to the cloud environment, they call it as a cloudifying. So we'll be using something similar context. Uh, uh, so we'll be talking about central office. Uh, so the flow will be, I'll be just. Uh, Brief about what is central office, uh, and uh, well, uh, and also I'll spend a little bit of time on uh, data center fabrics because uh, that's that's the architecture which uh, most of the uh, work around this central office cloudification is being uh, used. Then we will see what it takes. Uh, uh, what what are the expectations from SDN controller? Uh, we, we will see that SDN controller is just a part of the whole architecture uh, of uh, central central office cloudification. We will see what are the expectations of the SDN controller, and we will we will try to explore can we can we do it with uh, Open Daylight uh, for now. So so it's it's not about uh, Open Daylight. I think you if some of you have heard of the CORD project that's going on, which which revolves around uh, this this whole uh, work. So uh, this if you to simplify it, I'm more referring to the CORD project, which if you are already following that project. I think. So it, it's not about ODL owners. Onos, Onos is the part of that COD project. Uh, so uh, it, it, it's more uh, a curiosity-based uh, inquisition rather than a competitive-based uh, analysis uh, thing. So, and uh, a lot of analysis is around uh, the COD project. I would like to thank that project. And I have taken some sources from uh, at and or Facebook uh, blogging and uh, other things for this. And all those opinions are shared purely based on the analysis. I'm not working on any of the specific uh, uh, project around ODL for this cloudification of central office. <coughs> so central office. So uh, we, we all know this. Uh, we have heard this uh, concept, uh, term called exchange, right? Uh, telephone exchange, you would have heard this uh, term. So th this is what uh, we usually re they refer it as a central office. So if you have been to any of the uh, telephone exchange you're nearby your house, you. That, 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 that's usually called as a central office. I think around uh, three or I'll show, I have that blog, around three years back, uh, there was a very nice article uh, where they mentioned this, this central office's locations are kind of very good locations to cloudify it. I mean, to have a data center environment in these offices, uh, it's, it's a very nice uh, option. So that's what the trend you might be seeing maybe in, few, uh, so come, uh, maybe in two, three years. You will sh don't be surprised. In after two years, you go and visit the nearby exchange. You will see a data center-like environment in the telephone exchange offices. Right? So it's, it's also called exchange. Uh, I think Airtel uh, uses the term DLC, but BSNL and MTNL, they all use the term exchange. Uh, and and it, it, it's a gateway for the customers. Right? It, it's, it's the most critical point. For the telecom providers, exchange is the most, uh, it, it's a vantage point for them. For uh, adding any new services, they, they, they look at this uh, location. What are sorry, sorry? Uh, digital link uh, something. Uh, so they call it as a DLC. I tried to uh, find that, but they use the term DLC, DLC. You, even in the Wiki Mapia, also, if you find where all the DLCs are there for Airtel, they have this that district DLC. Uh, some digital linkage, something. It's a C I'm missing. <laughs> no, no, not the carrier. <laughs> okay. And telco, uh, typically a telco runs around 50. Uh, I think I was just uh, look curious. Uh, how they run multiple telco uh, COs in an urban environment. My guess it may be around 50 in Bangalore, possibly. Uh, and each of uh, the central office might support uh, uh, hundreds of uh, enterprise customers and thousands of. Uh, uh, residential customers. 
And if you, I think Airtel has, uh, not Airtel, uh, AT&T has published a very nice map of their uh, central office location. If you see that, uh, you can Google it, you'll find it. Uh, there are numerous around the uh, US, and very interesting uh, map that. So th this is a very, uh, as I mentioned, this is a very critical point for the uh, t telcos. Uh, thing. <coughs> So, so most of these uh, central offices, right, they, they serve these residential customers, enterprise customers, and uh, mobile uh, customers. So if you go, if you are following the COD project, you will see the term R card, M card, or E card uh, revolves around these uh, three categories. Uh, they also have an A card, that is a, that's a kind of horizontal around these things, which is for analytics. Uh, uh, so if you are, uh, you know, for example, is there a residential card? The Jipon is a classic example uh, thing, where we have a on the on the there we have the central office running OLT, and uh, we have the ONTs running in uh, these residences, which are connected by PON network in between. Uh, and uh, extending that beyond the OLT, we have aggregation switch and uh, BNG. So all these uh, equipments reside in these central offices. The idea was to take these equipments and virtualize them and run it in a data center environment. Uh, kind of thing. So, so why do you want to uh, cloudify the the the, they, they <coughs> the I think there was a very nice uh, I think AT&T only in the, uh, published uh, a typical central office run around 300 plus uh, proprietary equipments. Okay, so so that that kind of become a they wanted to overcome that uh, high capex and opex I think so they want to see if they can get rid of the uh, too much of uh, uh, proprietary equipments. And they kind of acted as a bottleneck for them when it comes to adding adding new services. And they were telling it was uh, inhibiting the innovation thing. So most of the uh, reasons they were given is basically it inhibits the innovation. And it limits the ability for me to create new revenue sources. Right? OK, so they are facing, I think we are all aware that telcos are facing a lot of competition when it comes to the OTT or cloud providers. Most of uh, I think uh, telcos are trying to hard to convince uh, the customers to use their. I think I was g giving a Reliance Geo like uh, Geo money. Uh, if I want to use, uh, force to use their application or their cloud services, if I'm having their uh, already have their internet connectivity, why don't you use our cloud services directly? We are we will do better in that. So I think uh, again uh, three years back there was a uh, very nice uh, uh, survey around maybe just around 13 percent uh, cloud. Uh, I mean, uh, customers or enterprise customers were buying cloud services from the telcos itself. So they were not buying. So now they, now they want to convince their customers to buy the cloud services from telcos itself. So this is the competition they're facing. And uh, quite a few, even Indian telcos, they are banking a lot on this domain, whether Airtel or Reliance or most of them. They, they are trying to convince the customer to buy the cloud services from them so itself. And for that, the, uh, for me, uh, I need a flexibility or uh, the, uh, that, that kind of flexibility, like the, what the other cloud uh, providers have it, for me to add a new services or provide newer services. And uh, achieve the agility, whatever the cloud uh, providers have it, whether in terms of using OSS or the white box uh, elements, <coughs> and increase flexibility to add new services. So these are all, again, based on the studies, uh, I think, these are all the main reasons which are uh, quoted around why do you want to cloudify that, that central offices which was nice and happily running with so many proprietary boxes. Try to make it more uh, uh, nicer environment to add more and more newer services to it. And before I move on to uh, cloudifying this uh, central office, I just want to spend some time on the ether, I mean, the ether fabric or data center fabric uh, uh, because because most of the solutions you will see, uh, they are especially in NFP uh, uh, domain, all the data center environment they are using uh, the fabric architecture in their underlay network uh, rather than uh, the traditional. This used to be the traditional uh, data center uh, network architecture. I think most of us are aware of uh, this thing. So where we have the uh, bottom access switches, uh, aggregation switches, and the core switches uh, thing, and we had um, uh, two different options to run uh, L2 or L3 depending on which, which level of switches we are running. So I think to overcome this, try to flatten the uh, net, network. I think this was the traditional uh, thing where in the data center we have VMs, access uh, switches, core switches, and uh, aggregation and core switches. 
So the idea was to uh, bring in that uh, leaf and spine fabric. Uh, sometimes there is, there is, I think, a wiki article. Uh, you should not address uh, this uh, leaf and spine as a factory. Factory is different. Factory is, though the idea is uh, at the, in the middle, I need a higher bandwidth, and the edges, I need a lower bandwidth. But still, there is a lot of argument. Don't call it as a factory. factory. Uh, you, you can call it whatever you want. But the, the leaf and spine is the most common term, or it's used. I think it, it's, again, we all know that it's not a new uh, thing. It, it has that idea, the basic idea of, uh, uh, it exists from more than 50, 60 years back when, the, when people were building this uh, voice uh, switches, they were using these crossbars, right? So these, uh, these, these are the kind of crossbars they were using. So a typical uh, high maximum capacity crossbar, they could not uh, support uh, too many of those uh, elements. So the, this guy came up with a, uh, Sorry, uh, this Charles Claus came up with the idea of so to increase the, uh, the number of crossbars that can be handled in a single voice switch. If it is not possible, let me let me break up into multiple elements and uh, have this concept of each and every uh, output of this is connected to every other in the next level. Again, every output of this is connected to the every other uh, in the next level. So this this idea was uh, used in uh, the telcos maybe in 50, 60s. After some time, it was considered as a, not a good thing. It had, uh, but main requirement, it should be the non-blocking, right? Uh, so for this kind of uh, architecture to work, each and every of them should be a non-blocking way. So this the same thing has been uh, taken uh, now uh, in the data center environment, where we use uh, instead of these crossbars, we can you can see it as uh, those uh, switching elements, uh, replacing them, <coughs> and we can have the multi-stage uh, like this. So you will see most of the leaf and spine fabric, we will have this multi-stage uh, architecture, so realizing the same, same concept of each and every port of this connected to every other port of the next level. Yeah, so the idea is in between, if I see it as this as a black box, I can, whatever system, I should be able to connect it to the, any of these uh, functions or to the external uh, world. I can replace this with the, this, this kind of uh, multi-stage uh, uh, connectivities. I think too, this is what uh, you will see most of the deployment. We have these uh, leaf nodes. They can be the TOR themselves, I mean top of the rack switches uh, themselves, or they can be one level uh, below. You will see a lot of terms. Uh, some of them call it as a top of rack as access switches. On top of that, we call leaf. On top of that, spine. Or some people call it as a leaf, spine, and super spine. I don't know, going ahead, we might call the spine, the only spine, or whatever. But that's, it, that's the idea of this uh, multi-stage uh, uh, thing. I think we all, uh, this is a very popular, if you have not seen this, uh, this, this blog, uh, uh, it's a very interesting where, uh, in, uh, so there's a YouTube five minute video, if you have not seen, please go and take a look at that, where Facebook, uh, they, they showed how, how they did it, uh, this thing. So they created a pod, uh, with, with uh, 48 uh, top of the rack switches and uh, four uh, level of uh, one f plane of spine switches and they connected each of them and they rep replicated this whole uh, pod to have uh, multiples of uh, pods. The idea is exactly the same where uh, I think uh, this, this, uh, I think this figure will give a better uh, picture where each of these thing is uh, connected to the next level and each and every of this connected to every plane in the next level. So, so for this, uh, there are various advantages in this uh, thing because everything have equidistant uh, connectivity. Uh, for any any for any VM uh, sitting here to any other VM sitting here, it, it's a kind of safe distance. Uh, there are a lot of uh, advantages that are around. Please, if you are not seen, please go and take a look at this. Uh, uh, there, and there is a, that in that nice video they, they demonstrate if any one of them goes uh, down, how how the whole flow kind of change because for I have multiple options to reach uh, this. Uh, this guy who are sitting in here. So that's a very nice video. I don't want to spend too much on that. You, if you can go and see how, how uh, this, this works in that sense. So we, we have multiple options to reaching. Uh, I mean, any one of them goes down, I will still have the connectivity going. So this uh, has been used, uh, or still people are using this uh, architecture uh, in uh, most, of the, most of the NFE deployments uh, in this case. So I'll just give a brief how typically designed. We, if you want to design a fabric, how, like how many spine switches I need, how many leaf switches I need, 
if I want to answer, let's take a simple example. If I need an input of like a total number of edge ports, if I need around 650, and if I need an oversubscription ratio of 3 by 3 is to 1, oversubscription basically means uh, if, for example, if every input has to go to the every other output, then there is zero oversubscription. But if I can have this uh, for every one, I can have the three uh, uh, uplink and downlink ratio, is basically is what I'm calling as oversubscription. So if I need a 3 is to 1 oversubscription ratio, and if I need a 650 uh, ports, this is what uh, most of the data center design people will be discussing usually. If you're, they, are, they are given this as the input, so they can consider any of the vendor switches. So they will consider, assume that I have a, a single rack switch, uh, which, which has so many uh, 48 uh, 10 gig port and 4 uh, 40 gig port, okay? And I'll consider a spine switch with uh, 32 40 gig port. You can take from many vendors, the Cisco or Juniper, or so many vendors are there, right? So in that case, how many leaf switches I need? How many spine switches I need? This is what I have to answer. Or the, most of the data center networking designer has to answer this question, okay? So yeah, it, it's just a simple math, math there for the number of uh, edge port I need to support depending on uh, how many ports that rack switch has. So I would need around 14 uh, leaf switches. And uh, depending on uh, oversubscription based on that, so I would need uh, around two spine switches. So if you give me two uh, spine switches and 14 leaf switches, I would be able to support this configuration with so much of oversubscription ratio. Right? So this is, uh, this is how typically the, the I have, this is a very simple uh, design. Uh, but most of the fabric design goes in this uh, logic itself. But again, there are a lot of things we should consider. I, I'm putting this slide because when I talk about uh, whether the, we can do it with ODL, one of the important points is the fabric support, fabric configuration support. So what do we mean by that? It's still a, a tricky uh, point. Because if you have seen most of the fabric, the underlay network uh, thing, people, uh, whether to use uh, L2 or L3, there are a lot of discussion, a lot of ideas, a lot of vendors are proposing different options. A very, very interesting domain. If you see uh, Cumulus in the, how they are proposing for uh, underlay, I think if you are f uh, following the Dinesh, I think, right? he, he has given a lot of uh, webinars around that where uh, he explains how Cumulus is uh, providing their underlay network, uh, thing. whether it's pure L2 or pure L3. There are a lot of pros and cons. Uh, pure L2 is what ideally, if uh, things would have been, everyone got have gone that, I don't want to worry about that. Or pure L3 is what uh, most of the, if it's possible, every vendor would have it as a L3 because they know that L3 very well. Right? So purely L2, L3, or a mixed L2, L3, I will run uh, <coughs> so in the one in spine and another in uh, leaf, with and without redundancy, the MLAC configuration, uh, how it's uh, supposed to be happening and the leaf switches and uh, routing protocol choices. Currently, it's mostly it's uh, BGP and with or without SDN. Uh, if you say Cumulus, if you go and ask, they won't support uh, uh, SDN, they won't support open flow base. But there are some uh, vendors who would uh, who also support uh, uh, SDN based in their uh, fabric switches and uh, white box uh, switches. So there are, you see, there are a lot of configurations and uh, a lot of things to play around uh, in this uh, fabric configurations. So we must have to be very careful in this uh, part when we, when the things start comparing whether we can do with this or we cannot do with that. Yeah, so this, uh, this was the uh, blog I was mentioning where uh, three years back only he had a very nice discussion where a central office is the right place for me to cloudify, uh, thing, where I can set up a data center environment and try to virtualize all those uh, functions, whatever these, typically these uh, central offices have it, try to virtualize and run them as virtual machines in uh, uh, commercial off-the-shelf servers. <coughs> so uh, so this, is the, this first part is basically the data center. If you set up a data center-like environment, but meeting the telcos, uh, na, maybe a six nines or five nines requirement, 99.999 requirements, uh, typically the telco has it. So with, uh, with such kind of uh, data center infrastructure, on this infrastructure, try to virtualize all those uh, functions uh, which typically you see in the residential or uh, enterprise or mobile uh, central offices. Yeah, so it, it's, uh, they call it as a next generation uh, central office, uh, right? So that incorporates SDN and NFE on top of the software-defined architecture, and it relies on the cards 
uh, you'd say, uh, we need not take this definition as a, so religiously. So it, it's mostly like a, a, a proposal or in, in that level. So it relies on the courts and uh, no longer relies on typical, basically, this point is more important than the, this point. You see, it, it should no longer rely on the typical equipments you see in current uh, COs. Virtualize them and try to move them into uh, data center environment kind of thing. <coughs> then the compute node will be running all these VNFs as uh, virtual machines or containers. And we will have this network switches, uh, right, in, in the typically these kind of fabrics, who will be uh, moving the traffic from the access functions to the VNFs to the uh, my core network. Okay, so uh, this this whole uh, solution will act in between access uh, functions and the core network. Okay, take the uh, traffic from the access, run it around the VNFs, and pass it to the core uh, network. So most of the uh, central office uh, virtualization uh, solution you will see in that uh, way. So for uh, under the residential, you will see these uh, kind of uh, functions that are virtualized. Uh, I'll, I'll be taking one of the examples in uh, residential uh, itself. Whereas for mobile, we have uh, virtualizing RAN, uh, EPC, or uh, edge services, uh, like caching, SON, billing, like that. And uh, for, for uh, enterprise, we have that the VPN services and validated services and integrated analytics. Uh, Okay, so uh, this, this just I want to summarize. Uh, so, what is the requirement uh, when it comes to the cloudifying central office? So, this is what we expect. So, we expect uh, a data center fabric, typically controlled by a SDN uh, controller. We have uh, VNFs. We all know we managed uh, via VNF orchestrator manager, preferably generic. That that itself is a big argument uh, going on uh, whether it should be a generic or a custom. Uh, I think a lot of uh, discussions around that. And uh, NFVI management, <coughs> OpenStack, uh, containers, uh, VNF, VM lifecycle management, and the service composition. I think we, we have seen a lot of discussions. I think uh, the previous one was itself was around uh, service composition uh, way. And uh, how, to, how do we manage these overlay networks, again, typically controlled by the SDN controller. So uh, this, this is a very high level uh, requirements. Uh, we want to summarize. Uh, for cloudifying the central office. And again, this is a very uh, summarized uh, architecture of a uh, central or cloudified central office. So where uh, this, this blue box is where I get the, all the traffic from the access uh, functions. So for well, one of the example of this blue box I would like to mention, uh, I'll, I'll come to that, uh, I'll come to that point. I think uh, for VOLT, I think, I, I'll come to that uh, point. So where I will, uh, I will get all those uh, traffic from this action, whether it's a data or control, uh, it receives from this uh, blue. Uh, I think, yeah, we can see, if we consider this as a control uh, traffic. So uh, if required, it goes to the SDN controller, uh, and all the control element comes back, and it usually may come back to this thing. I don't know why I have moved it uh, on the other scale. Whereas uh, the data traffic will again move to the uh, element, it may not reach the control plane and goes to the multiple VNFs and go out of this uh, thing. So typically you will see these kind of uh, things happening. Whereas on the control control element, we, we need uh, typical NFV mono components. Uh, it could be any of these open uh, projects. Uh, depending on the vendor, uh, uh, how they package it, you will see, I think again vendors are playing a role, the way they package it, they can take any of these mono components they can take any of the SDN controllers uh, thing. And these are the applications. They may develop on their own, or they may take the existing applications that are there for the SDN controllers. So this is where we are, we are uh, uh, the, I'm, I'm more uh, uh, focusing on this uh, talk. As I said, SDN controller is, uh, is a part of this whole architecture, right? So uh, this is where I was trying to, uh, like, more, more uh, curious. How, how uh, ODL would perform if I want to replace this uh, box in ODL and see whether uh, it, it, it can support all the necessary things which we would need it, right? So <coughs> just an example of uh, uh, virtualizing the central office, the GPON uh, thing. So if you, we have to first virtualize the BNG, we can virtualize the Ethernet uh, aggregation switch and the virtualize the OLT, okay? 
uh, typically when I say BNG, we use the V router, we use the service gateway, and set of the IP functions. Uh, so if I want to uh, achieve that, I will have to, uh, I can have the multiple, these are the multiple residential customers, and in between I can have a distribution uh, unit, which can again be programmable, or it need not be a program. That's why I mean, put it as an optional uh, distribution unit uh, in between the residential customers. And we have the OLT hardware uh, interface. So uh, this hardware, again, I think under OCP, Open Compute Project, uh, recently, um, a month back, I think so, at and proposed uh, specification for uh, the, this hardware, uh, this o OLT hardware interface. So if you see that they call it as a uh, VOLT card, they, the line card, they call it as a line card, but it's actually a big server, a rack server sort of a thing, uh, which has a one interface as a GPON interface, and another interface is uh, my normal Ethernet interface. Okay. So they have proposed this uh, open specification for a line card for VOLT, which you can place it in your rack. Okay. So you can take the connectivity that was coming from all your residential customers, connect to that rack, and the other end you can take it and connect to another one of the leaf switches. Okay, so and I can run my VSG, my V router, my V VOLT, my V firewall, V IPS, all these functions in this uh, server, and I will have a control plane running. Here, this is where my uh, SDN controller and uh, all the co control uh, components will be sitting in this uh, control plane. So, uh, yeah, this is what the line card specification. So. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, so in this uh, architecture, right, so most of the control traffic would be coming around here. It would be going, reaching, the, passing through this fabric, going to the control plane, comes back, and they can go back to this one. And most of the data traffic will again will follow this thing. This take this path, pass through this multiple uh, network function based on the service function chaining, what you had seen uh, earlier. Then uh, it can go out of this. I think on this side, you will see Typically, in most of this uh, architecture, on the right-hand side, you will see connected to the core network connection. Okay, so the the data traffic will move like this uh, to multiple function, go to the core network, and the control traffic uh, will come like this and go back to the. Thing. So this is the typical flow of control and data plane you will see in most of this uh, virtualized solutions of for uh, central offices. Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, from from it from the uh, how it how it would look uh, for example if I want to refer it to the uh, that project so typically a vendor uh, the way today he might uh, propose a solution uh, uh, you will they would call it as a uh, ARP ARP pod or M pod so you will see a rack uh, a vendor will propose a rack in which uh, one of the server will be a SDN controller uh, another server will be running uh, OpenStack. Uh, Another two to three servers will be my compute nodes on which uh, I'll be running these uh, virtualized functions. And there'll be another uh, rack on which this uh, OLT interface is uh, implemented. And on the same rack, I will have multiple uh, leaf and spine switches. Okay, So that I can take it and plug into my existing infrastructure directly, or it could be on its own running there. Okay, So this is how you can uh, visualize uh, 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 that solution being coming into the market for now, or uh, yeah, I think it's uh, it's already there. I think. So I can take that kind of one of the rack uh, thing and directly plug into my existing infrastructure, or it can be on its own running there. <coughs> okay, so uh, let's come to the uh, point here. So so uh, I'll first say what are the expectations that are there from the controller side when it comes to the uh, cloudifying this uh, central office. So it should be able to configure and manage overlay networks. And it should realize the service forwarding graph or the service chaining. I think the, there's a path implementation through. That's what I think uh, one of the HC TST specification calls this as a path implementation through NFVI. Uh, because we are from the testing company, I, I was more looking at that specification. They term it as a path implementation. Through. So configuring and managing and the VNFs, okay, it could be my some of the some of the VNFs might re require the central I mean, control plane to manage them. For example, V router or uh, SGW uh, data plane and control plane. 
and uh, necessary applications to support uh, different uh, use cases, uh, maybe some for RAN slicing based on the policies, EPC core slicing, uh, SD-WAN, L2, L3 VPN, transport SDN, analytics support. So these are the typical applications uh, that would be required for uh, any of this uh, R chord, uh, M chord, and chord. And uh, underlay network configuration, the data center fabric, right? So this is uh, what is, uh, uh, so uh, I, I, how, how did I come up with this list? Uh, if I ask is again through the study and analysis of the existing uh, work, uh, mainly around COD project. So if I want to go and analyze all the R chord, C chord, and M chord from the COD project and try to understand what kind of applications that would be needed, what, what is the expectations from SDN controller from that kind of a work. So I try to make uh, and put it as a list. So this is, well, I'm again, I have uh, written here, it may not be complete. Uh, so I have tried my best to enlist what are, what are the expectations uh, that is required from a SDN controller to support uh, these cases. Uh, yeah, so, so you have seen these things, right? So you have seen, so can you just remember uh, these things for a moment? And if, I want, if you want to answer that question now, like what do you think? Uh, you have seen uh, the expectation in the previous slide. This is what uh, we expect uh, SGN controller to do uh, for me to virtualize the central office. So now if I want to say, uh, if I, there is a spectrum of answers now, right? So if I want to say, yes, it's all there in ODL, how many would say yes? Can you just raise your hand? Nobody wants to say? Yeah, uh, so you think, you believe yes. So how many yes? Only one. And uh, how many say we are almost there? You. And rest of us are uh, no? Okay. This is sad news, right? I thought we are more on the blue and the green side. Okay. So, but yeah, uh, but uh, the whole, my uh, whole point is, no, we are not on the red. We are either more on the blue or rather, in some cases, if you are a staunch uh, ODL uh, person, will always argue that we are in blue green, the way you look at that uh, cloudifying the central office. And the way you look at it, we can always argue that we are either on the, the green or in the blue side. But definitely not on the red, I would say, but we are the, at least we are there in the blue. Thing. So uh, why why uh, I would have to justify that argument, right? So let me look at the, that. So can we can we meet those expectations? So so the first uh, so this is what I try to uh, summarize. So configure and manager overlays, yes, right? So we can SFC, we can do that. Configuring managers of VNFs, yes. Are there necessary applications? Yes. I'll just uh, show the justification uh, why there is a necessary applications are already there. Underlay network configuration is that's what I want. I'm not. Uh, uh, convinced because again I'll come back to that point. Uh, if, if, for example, if any SDN vendor says that I can manage uh, uh, underlay network, there is a lot of argument what he exactly means by that. Unless we go into the details, it, it is a gray area. Okay, so uh, that is where uh, I would like to put a star there. Uh, Okay, so if you see the uh, upcoming projects in Open Daylight, right? For example, OCP plugin, if it's a new project, which is around the RAN, right? Uh, virtualizing the RAN uh, radio access uh, network, uh, managing the mobile uh, heads. So the OCP plugin is a, uh, it's a project that is uh, started in uh, Open Daylight. So th that, that uh, and, uh, and we have uh, quite a few network slicing. So if you see that uh, in recently in that uh, thing, how, how uh, network slicing for 5G networks is achieved with uh, open uh, daylight, I uh, think. So the network slicing is also well covered. And if you see that open daylight is as a part of the OPNFP projects, right? If you, if, uh, uh, if you guys are following the OPNFP project uh, there, the open daylight is part of quite a few projects in OP, uh, OPNFP. And most of this, like a doctor, promise, and multi-site, they are all supporting these analytics and monitoring uh, solutions. Right, and uh, we have uh, this is I try to enlist those applications that are there in Open Daylight that ma try to achieve these things like traffic engineering, cloud network virtualization, L2 L3 VPN, 
data center interconnectivity, SFC, network QoS, and analytics, and VPP. So all these projects are geared towards uh, these kind of use cases, uh, right? So we have a lot, all the all majority of those applications for, are there, right? And also the new uh, the newest project, I think uh, one of the newest projects is uh, Fabric as a Service. So to so try to even cover that base, a project in Open Data started on Fabric as a Service, uh, and and we as you know the almost all telcos are part of the uh, Open Data Advisory Group. So so they, they are driving uh, even if we are uh, miss, uh, missing there, they ensure that it's there. And uh, other other uh, projects are like a time series data repo, Sentinel, IoTDM. So if you see that all those things applications, either it uh, covers that enterprise code or the R code or the M code, there we have almost majority of the applications that are there required for this, supporting this case, okay? So uh, the whole uh, argument for me in this talk is, we are in, the, in that spectrum, we are not on the red, we are either in the blue or the green, okay? So we can, we can argue, we can keep discussing on that, uh, but that's the message uh, I wanted to convey uh, that. And uh, this again, as I said, it's a trick question. So what do, what do we mean by uh, when we say the SDN uh, controller can uh, uh, manage the uh, fabric? Uh, there are a lot of discussions. Can, is that fabric, uh, first of all, is it uh, uh, there is a separation of control and data plane in that fabric? Or whether, whether SDN controller only does the device configurations or it goes beyond the device configurations? or whether the controller can do the multi-vendor. If it is doing only the device configuration, can it do the multi-vendor uh, support, or it's just uh, associated with a single vendor? And what kind of uh, configuration, whether it's L2 or L3 or a hybrid L2 or L3? So there are a lot of discussions around uh, this thing uh, when it comes to the fabric management. So if people wants to argue that uh, Open Daylight has this uh, lack of uh, fabric as a service uh, thing, there, there can be a counter argument what, you, what we exactly mean by the, uh, for, for, I mean, uh, managing the fabric by a SDN uh, controller. So, uh, yeah, so this is uh, uh, what I wanted to summarize and uh, uh, convey. I, I understand this, this, this whole uh, argument whether uh, we should, uh, there is no yes or no answer. Uh, right. It depends how you see and what, what is the use case you are specifically you are looking for. Okay. Thanks, guys. So if you have uh, any question, I, if I know, I can answer that. Yeah. You know, as, uh, you know, as this is about uh, your you know, topic, so, uh, you, know, you know, with respect to the central office, right, you know, uh, you talked about OLT. So, OLT is a, you know, very expensive device, you know, so, no. so the NPI costs are really very, very high. Yeah. So, that's one. Second, uh, not every operator, you know, are like at and and something who can really, really, you know, remove existing, you know, CEOs. So, for an India-specific scenario, you might need, uh, you know, for, you know, the last mile connectivity, you might have a, you know, in, in, you know, basically, a, you know, a new central office. But how, you know, you can, you know, basically cloudify the things. You know, you know, so basically existing deployments, which I think will stay for the next five, six years. Then you have the new deployment and this concept with respect to, with respect to the OLT, because the OLT specification is new. Hmm. Uh, and I think not, you know, all vendors are really, you know, coming with this, you know, new card in the next one year or two years. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, I understand that. Uh, see, if you take Indian uh, vendors, right, when the way I see, central office is a physical infrastructure. So we don't see that then uh, I will destroy the, my current central office and uh, run it. So central office itself can become a data center environment. So in my, in my nearby central office, if I hardly like two, three kilometers, if I go to the nearest central office, that central office itself can host uh, these kind of uh, virtualized infrastructure. So that's why I was trying to visualize if I can buy a three to four pods and run, uh, I can still run a virtualized uh, OLT uh, as a, a set of pods, and I can run it in my central office. It's it's not necessary that uh, assume that uh, for example, any take a, a Airtel or somebody they have multiple central offices and they can have their own data center. 
it's not that they they bring down the central office and move it everything to the data center. Need not be. It 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 those central office themselves can host uh, these. Uh, I'll just add to that. Right. The whole idea of this card project is how to leverage the existing infrastructure what we have, the existing real estate what we have, and then convert into the data center. The reason for that is instead of putting all your virtual function in a central data center, you move it to close to the customer as possible, mm -hmm. so that you reduce the latency, reduce mm -hmm. unnecessary traffic over your network, and that's the whole idea of your card project. I didn't yeah. capture that that as a, one of the benefit of this card project. Probably you should do that. Yeah, I, th I mentioned that. Uh, the, uh, I don't know why it's not changing. And to the other point about the OLT, yes, not every vendor in the world has the JPON network and the OLT, but it's not only about the OLT. So yeah. we can move all our existing um, data um, uh, services, like your routers, your gateway routers, those can be virtualized and then we can put it on our racks. See, see this blog, right, they argue that central office is ideal to house the new uh, telco cloud. So it, it, they say they don't they don't. Uh, they want to use the central office, but move those uh, pods into the central office. Let that uh, central office host this uh, new telco cloud. So it's not that they take it to their data center. They can run it in the central office itself. So that is where it makes sense whether I take AT and T's OCP line card or I can take uh, any existing or build my own line cards uh, for VOLT for OLT line cards, right? I think that OLT line cards itself is matured, and we have quite a few vendors around that. Uh, I think PMC, I think PMC are the ones, most of the vendors are using the chipset of, of the, if I'm, I don't know, I'm right if I'm right, PMC, yeah. So uh, this is, uh, this again I was mentioning, uh, it, it is ideal to host uh, for the new telco cloud. Move it to the central offices, uh, these ports, instead of putting it in my data center. Okay, so if no questions, then thank, thanks a lot for the opportunity. Oh, yeah. So the question is uh, about the intelligence in the network. So there can be two places. One, the intelligence will be on uh, the applications which run on top of the controllers or the intelligence will be on the applications which run on top of VNF managers. Okay. Huh. So is there any consensus on where the intelligence needs to be? In the latter case, the controller is just the renderer of uh, flows. Uh -huh. It need not have any intelligence, right? So what is the basic uh, direction in which people are moving towards? Uh, see, then again, that so what that application does. So you, are, you, are you referring to any specific application? Uh, uh, then we can see whether it's uh, running it on uh, my SDN controller or running it with VNF manager. See, VNF manager, it's all about the VNF lifecycle management, right? So if application is, is around that lifecycle management, then it's, you, the way one can argue that I will run it in my VNF manager. Let's take a case of MCOD. So uh, the orchestration would be uh, closely tied with the network nodes. So he will have the intelligence about EPC nodes and stuff like that. The SDN control will not be aware of all those things. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't get the application name. What then? Uh, M cord, mobile cord. Ah, mobile cord. Yeah. Uh, yeah mob, uh, so in that mobile cord, you have any uh, specific uh, you are referring to? Ta -ta 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 -ta. Oh, where did it go? I had one slide mentioning. Uh, that, uh, let me go to that. Uh, Animation, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so um, with this, what happens is you will have uh, virtual instances of EPC nodes created. So the orchestration. E EPC nodes. Huh. Yeah, like say for example the EP gateway and S gateways. S gateway, yeah, yeah. So when the orchestration has this intelligence, it makes sense to have the intelligence in those applications, right? So the controller need not uh, be a very intelligent or it need not have any application designed for these use cases. It will simply render the open flow rules there. No, uh, again, we are, we are, it's, it's a very uh, tricky point what you're mentioning here. See, when, they, when you say orchestrator uh, has the information, uh, yes. e, e, orchestrator 
uh, for example, he, he, he understands the infrastructure and he understands uh, if you ask him to place this, uh, run a one instance of S gateway in that thing, he knows how to uh, where and uh, run it in the instance of that S gateway. Correct. Right? Yeah. So, but if you are in within S gateway, right, if you see that uh, if from the virtualization perspective, I split it into S gateway data plane and S gateway control plane. Mm -hmm. Right? So, the, the element of that S gateway control plane, where should I run? Uh, whether I should run it as a VNF manager or whether I should run it as a uh, SDN control application, is that what you're referring yes, to? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's, uh, uh, if you ask me as, a, as an answer, I would, I would say I would still push, push it into a SDN controller and VNF manager, I will just leave it into the lifecycle management. See, even when it comes to the VNF manager, the, one of the operations is the initial configuration. So should I do the initial configuration so for the S gateway data plane initial configuration, so I can move that initial configurations of uh, S gateway to the VNF manager and any other uh, thing, I can move it as part of the controller. Uh, so which part of that control plane, it, it's a very, uh, it's, I don't know, it's a very, if I want to say that all the, uh, whatever the VNF manager has been defined to do that for the configuring the, uh, Initial configuration, you still leave it with the VNF manager. We should not ask SDN controller to do the initial configurations of that. Yes. So once that initial configuration of that uh, instance is done, anything other than that, uh, most of the, what is that, SDN controller, for example, if he wants to configure it, reconfigure re re it by netcon for any other thing, I would still use the SDN controller to do that uh, thing. Whereas for the initial configurations thing, for the VNF manager is better suited to do that. Okay. So uh, the, the message is we will uh, stick to the NFV specifications uh, or HC NFV specifications uh, when it comes to the uh, VNF management uh, purpose. Because the, uh, if, we, if we try to make it custom, right, the telcos are having an uh, issue of running multiple VNF manager for multiple VNFs. Uh, so if, if we stick to the HC NFV specification of that VNF uh, management, the APIs of uh, VI, uh, no, VNF and VM, VNF and VM, I think that's what the name of the mm -hmm. interface is called. Mm -hmm. So if we stick to the specification, first part is the initial configuration and modification, then, uh, then the, all the remaining lifecycle, performance, fault, and all the other lifecycle management. So if, if the application is concerned with these things, leave it with the VNF manager, else you can move it to the SDN controller. Okay. Okay, so thanks a lot, uh, guys. Again, uh, I appreciate your support. Uh, I actually I wasn't part of it. I had, in the last minute, I had to trouble Phil and uh, get it. <laughs> Thank you very much.